they do. Well, good morning. It is good morning. it is Monday morning. Uh, we trust that you are well. That you had a great week from last. Wow, um, Tuesday, I guess. That's oh, okay. It wasn't that loud. Um, we saw you last Monday. Uh, we thought hope you had a great week and a fantastic weekend. Uh, football games were off the chain this weekend, by Good the way. Good football weekend. Awesome. Just And ready for tonight. Yeah, the national championship game, the the Battle of the Tigers. Clemson Tigers, LSU Tigers, ACC versus SEC. Should be a lot of fun. And that's what been for? Uh, you know what? I'd like to see LSU win only I because I, 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 it's, not, it's not like I'm an SEC, SEC fan, but I do like Coach O. I like Coach O. Go Tigers. I like that dude. And and he had a hard time, you know, he was horrible at it was horrible at Ole Miss and then got passed over at USC and then went to LSU and got the job under strenuous circumstances. Um and it was just it was just tough. So he's built something that's really cool there. So I'm cheering for Coach O. I love the guy. I love the voice. I love the whole I love the whole thing. I just love LSU. I like LSU. Yeah. You know when it comes to them not playing. Yeah, it's only not playing for state. <laughs> yeah. And it isn't like I'm cheering against Clemson because you know no, what? I like Dabo Sweeney I like too. too. I like Dabo Sweeney too. Um, we but have, we know a lot of young men that went there. Yeah, so, so I, you know, I'm, so I'm okay you with know, Clemson, but it should be a great game though. It should be it's awesome. Be a good game. And without the Patriots in the NFL playoffs, Yay! it sort of opened up the whole thing again. <laughs> yes, more it, you know. The underdogs are getting. Well, yeah, play. I mean, I mean, you're starting to see teams you hadn't seen before, and you know, and and there isn't this this inevitability of Belichick and Brady. Not that I don't respect them, but there's not an inevitability of them. So you get tired of the same old team. It's just to the Super Bowl. so it's just fun. We need something fresh. And it's just been it's just been fun watching um, a lot of the young guys, with the exception of Aaron Aaron Rodgers, uh, um, you know, get their time. Time to shine without being under the umbrella of Tom Brady. So anyway, good football weekend. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about something that's fairly serious this morning, but I think it's affecting a lot of people, especially um, people who are maybe, well, maybe, but maybe not quite as they're into that five to seven years in their in their marriage as you know as, as Deb and I. Uh, and you and you see the title. The title is divorce all around you. What do you do? Uh, People who've been married, like like Deb said, about five, excuse me, five seven years or so, uh, this is the time where some of your contemporaries, who got married around the same time you did, uh, are some of them are starting to struggle. Some of them may even already be divorced. You know, it's a scary thing, especially because a lot of them have had kids. And once you get kids in the mix, and you were in that, and you were level. in their wedding, mm -hmm. <laughs> you were in their wedding. Um, so you feel with 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 a Christian based marriage and stuff, and you're in the wedding. You know, people like I always say, people don't take that to heart. You are responsible for helping them through their marriage. You have been asked to be a part of their their union for a reason god made that for a reason and you are kind of responsible and and people who take that to heart and and really believe in it it starts to hurt them oh yeah because you figured that there was something that you mm -hmm. that you should have done you could have done what could i have done to help them save their marriage yeah, so we have you know our, our, our people are people are struggling and at about five or six years, you know, they got that movie um, in the in the forties called the seven year fifties called the seven year itch, um, but that's based. It's really based on reality because people are really starting to, I don't know, form who they're going to be, and sometimes it the transition for folks is tough. Um, but as you see things around you, you're starting to see people your age, people who are in the same position. Um, in you know what in their careers and you know financially and they're struggling you start to think people start to think sometimes this could happen to me too because again from a Christian perspective God is no respecter of a person so yeah. just because it's happening you know just because it hasn't happened to you doesn't mean it can't doesn't mean that you aren't susceptible to the very same things um, 
so it's hard sometimes, you know, what it, and, it, and it can be kind of kind of kind of frightening when you see people around you struggling, especially people that you didn't think would struggle. When you you were there when they met and you know their relationship and how much they love each other, but <laughs> Kind of like the Tina Turner song. What's love got to do with it? It's Sometimes. more. It's, it's more, more than, than that. love. And we've been and we've been saying that you know this is we're coming up on our two year anniversary anytime now. Next week, we got yes. Next, next week, MLK. MLK Day. will be our um, second year anniversary um, here on Facebook Live every Monday morning or dang near every Monday morning. Uh, more Mondays than not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is. <clears throat> It is tough. There's a lot. And a lot of times, and I, and I think what happens a lot of times, people get married and you're right. You have the, you have the, you, you have the ceremony and everybody's dressed up in, you know, what, in the clothes and everybody's laughing and having a great time because it is a good time. Um, it's a celebration. And it doesn't go past that. I think people get told that everybody's responsible and everybody, er, you know, er, everybody at the time, I think they mean it. I think everybody, everybody means it. But the nuts and bolts of, of staying involved, the nuts and bolts of working through the working marriage, through and getting working through the hard times, getting the advice and the help and the encouragement from the people that you ask to be in your wedding, um, and understanding why you ask them, not just out of obligation because you went to church with them, they were your friend, they, you know, they were a cousin or brother or sister or whatever, um, but. Could they help you through the tough part? Mm -hmm. um, and then if you were in the wedding, did you stay attached enough in a, in a, in a real way to be able to be to there? To be an influence. When, they, you know, when people are, are struggling. Because what, what we found, what we found is that everybody pretty much goes through a lot of the same stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we go through a lot of the same stuff. So, some people to a, a, a larger intensity than others, but it's pretty much the same stuff. Pretty much. Um, you you go through the time that you have the kid, um, and a lot of times you think, oh, this is going to make us closer. It's going to help out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> kids don't make your marriage better. No, they they, they actually make it tougher. I'll be honest with you. Now, I'm not saying don't have children because please have children, but if you think that it's going to make it better, it isn't going to make better. It's going to make or it, make him stay. It's going to make it heavier because not, because somebody else is, somebody else it's literally somebody else is involved. Um, and depending on you, yeah, to be to have to act straight. Um, and when and when you're already struggling, the last thing that you can do is bring something else on. Like if you can't carry the weight that you have on your back now, adding fifty pounds or five pounds. In the case of a baby, um, it's not gonna make it better. Doesn't make it better. If the ship is sinking, do you don't, start don't make putting the, stuff on? Don't make the whole <laughs> don't make the whole bigger. <laughs> and the boat is sinking. When the boat is sinking, most people are throwing things off. They're getting rid of things that they you think is weighing them down. Yeah. And making it go down faster. You're not bringing stuff on. So bringing a baby in, it's not gonna make it easier. No. And and a lot of people and a lot of people who who are in that five to seven year stretch um, have had a baby or maybe two even, and we talked about the pressure of having ha having a child. Um, it's 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 the best thing in the world, and some days it's the worst it's in the, the world. It's <laughs> the hardest thing in the world. The hardest thing in the world, because again, the the child depends on you for every single solitary thing, every waking hour of your life. And if you're not settled, if you don't, if you're not providing that child a firm enough foundation to grow, then you're going to have problems. Uh, and that doesn't, and you know, and, and I think people make that a lot of people make that mistake. It's an and it's an age old mistake, and it's not a millennial mistake. Stop blaming the young. People. It isn't. It's just a that's where people are in their mind at that stage of their lives, and it's and unfortunately it's always been that way. Um, so. Again, you know, people who have been married in that five to seven years, you have that going on around you. What are you going to do to not, first of all, not be afraid? Because you can't be afraid. And second of all, sort of stave it off in your own household. That's, I think, is something that we have to have that discussion. Um, 
my my first thought is get around people who are doing well. And this isn't everything, I think. Yeah. You know, if your business is struggling, get around people who His business is are, who, who are doing well. Um, if, you, if, if you feel just internally, maybe it is an external that your marriage is struggling a little bit or you're, or, you're, or you're afraid that you might slip into that, get around people who are doing well and listen to their sage. If they have sage advice, listen to it. And if you can enact some of that advice, advice do so. Um, know that people make it or they can and that can be you too and the same way I just said that God's not respected of a person it doesn't mean that just because somebody else is struggling and is failing it means you have to fail because there are people who are not failing mm -hmm. there are people who have been married a while who have gone through the battles who have, who have, who have, some of them even have the battle scars but they are winning now find them they're out there don't think that you're alone. You're not alone. In Don't this. think that you're alone in this, but find find the help that you need. And and, 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 you make, and you make a great point because a lot of times when people are struggling, and we've seen this in some of the people that we know, they tend to isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. You tend to Stop break off relationships, relationships with the people that you that knew you when you were the cute couple, right? Mm -hmm. Um. When you had the, your first kid and you were cute and adorable and everybody loved you and then you struggle and then you sort of isolate yourselves. Because you don't want anybody, because first of all, you don't want anybody to know um, because you feel like you're failing. And what happens to the little cub that's left out by himself? He dies. He gets eaten. He gets eaten. Don't be by yourself. I know it's tough to, to talk to people and... And, and let somebody know what's going on, but you don't want to be out there by yourself. And then that lion comes, you know, and he's hungry. The bear will eat you. That's all there is to it. You're cute and cuddly and you will be eaten. Um, and it happens all the time. All the things, you know, it's like what happened to Job. Everything you feared will come upon you, will happen to you. Uh, because you did not make yourself safe by, by getting yourself in an enclave of people who love and care about you, who are going to help you guys get through it. Because you can get through it. And a lot of people don't get through it because they isolate themselves. You know, we, you find out, it's funny, you find out pe people sort of disappear for a couple of years, and then and then you find out, oh yeah, they got divorced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what the hell? What? The, what? Or if you're in church or whatever like that. They stop coming they to church. They stop coming to church. And then you find out a couple years later, oh yeah, they got divorced. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, I thought they... Because they separated they themselves. They separated themselves from the people who love them. And love and care about them and who and will fight for their marriage because we said we would. Mm -hmm. Don't oh, don't be embarrassed. That's what I think a lot of people I get in right. there. They're embarrassed, you know, because right. we, you know, people people thought we were doing so good and all this stuff like this. And I just don't want people to know. I don't, I don't want to. Because I've been there. I'm, and not in in marriage and in other things in in life. You you feel like, oh, nobody want to hear nothing about this again. I've been struggling and struggling. And we've been struggling all this time and doing this and. And, and, and when I talk about it, people seem like they don't care. So I'm just going to go away. Find people. Who care. And they're out there. People care. Um, and now we have more access to that than, than ever before, really. Um, you can find encouragement from any number of, 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 of sources. Surround yourself with people who have been successful in that area. And I think that that's really the key. I mean, and, and it doesn't matter what the subject matter is, as far as I'm concerned. Find find people who have been successful in that arena. If and learn from them. And learn from them. If, like, like I said before, if you're struggling in your marriage, find people who are, who, who are who have been successful. If you're struggling, struggling financially, find people who are doing well, who are prospering. Find people who are doing well and surround yourself with them. Because that's going to change the most important part of this your mindset. 
And a lot of times people will, uh, they, you try with, you know, we say go to someone and you go to someone and that first person that you talk to, they're not the right one. Go to somebody else. <laughs> don't give up. If they don't make you feel better, if they don't make you feel more encouraged or they don't challenge you, go to somebody else. Yes. Don't give up with because that first person you talk to is negative or they, you know, telling you, well, you just might as well get divorced. Yeah, if they, if they agree with your worst fears, <laughs> they are not the one. They are not the one. You need someone to encourage you and challenge you and will, and who, who's going to be there through the thing, through the, the times that, that, that are tough. That's going to say to you, remember what you said at your wedding. We talked remember about that the last vows. Time, yes, remember your vows. And, and that person that you talk to should throw you back to what does the word of God say? What does, what does the vow say that you took? Are you being, are you being, you know, what you said you would be in those vows? Even if you write your vows, a lot of people, you know, don't want to go with the traditional biblical vows or whatever like that, but vows should still be. A vow is something a, that you promised. Yes. It's still something that you promised, whether whether it, it, it's, it's traditional vows uh, or something that you wrote or something that you found on the internet. If you said it to the other person at that point, it's something that you have to, that you should live up to. Your vows weren't. Um, I um, I vowed uh, to stay married to you unless, until we don't have any money. Until crap gets hard, and then I'm out. That's my vow. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> You wouldn't agree to that. Nobody would agree to that. Nobody would agree to that. So, so again, that's really important. Are you? And we talked about that the last last time, last week. Yeah, live up to your vows. Mm -hmm. Go back to them. And this, and, and this is again something that that you can do with anything. If you're struggling in your faith, go back to when you started. To your first love. What you say before. Where were you before? And you might have to start again. I don't think the second time will take as long, but you might have to start again. And this is important in, in, in marriage too. Even if you see divorce happening all around you, and if you've been in that five to seven year range, you're probably gonna start seeing that. You're probably gonna see some of the people you thought were doing fine, you thought were gonna make it, not Struggling. doing well. Um, and because things change. And then again, people isolate themselves. Now, we always wonder about people who have been married 20 or 30 years. Because and, and it happens in this arena. We're not, we're not uh, immune to, no. to it. No, with people who have been married. Just because we've made it 30 some years doesn't mean we are immune to it. And sometimes we have to go and, you know. Start again. Yes. You start again. Just go back to what you said. And it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to be a big deal. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be a big emotional um, falling on your face kind of sort of situation. But in your in your heart and mind, just go back to the beginning. What did you say you were going to do? And assess where you are realistically, not necessarily emotionally. And um, although emotions are important, but not but not like we said, what's love got to do with it? I love that song. What's love? What's love? The S and the L. It's one word. S L U V E. Slove. I was like, you know, I don't know what slove is. <laughs> I want to know what slove is. Anyway, so that is, is, is that you might have to go back in your heart and figure out why you started in the first place. What you say in the first place. So, And you're right, people who have who, who, been married maybe 20, 25 years, they struggle too. And, but they do the very same thing that other people do. They isolate, isolate them. them. They isolate themselves. They get caught up in work. Um, they don't go to church as often. They don't go to the social group as often. They don't have parties as often. They isolate themselves. And then you're just sitting in that morass that is your problem. Because the thing that happens uh, in when people start turning 50, that midlife, what they call it, a midlife crisis. Yeah, whatever. And you start to evaluate where your life is and what has... This is as good as it's going to be. What? what? I was going to be, be an astronaut. <laughs> what, 
we should have more. We should be doing better, and, you know, and things should be better. And and this guy at work wants to talk to me, and he seems to have a lot going on. So what, maybe? And that becomes the situation. Yes. And that becomes how people crap can their lives, really. I'm just serious. I'm just serious. Um, hardly ever does that scenario work out. People end up crap canning their lives. And then and then you end up in a worse position than you ever were before. So, don't isolate yourself. Don't. S seek help. Don't. And don't be embarrassed. Look at a squirrel and think it's better. Squirrel. <laughs> don't get thrown off your track. That's what Pastor was talking yeah. about. Don't get thrown off your track. Stay focused on, on the goal, the the reason that you started this life with this person and, and where you want, you know, the things that you want to, to accomplish. You can't accomplish that if you divorce that person. You remember back in the 80s, there was this thing uh, rolling, around the, rolling around the church called the danger of the second glance? Mm-hmm. Everybody's, everybody's going to look. Hmm. Don't look again. At second glance. <laughs> At second glance is the one they... That, that gets you in trouble. That gets you in trouble. That, <laughs> that's the trap right there. Um, so the idea is, again, if you are seeing divorce all around you, if you're seeing people struggle all around you, surround yourself with people who aren't struggling and follow their and follow their example. Now, they're not perfect either because they're people. Mm -hmm. So don't put them on a pedestal higher than they deserve. But they may have sage advice for you. They may have good advice for you. They may have good counseling for you, and they may be a good example for you if you start to see, uh, again, people around you struggling. And um, and try to be, the, and, and you can try to be a good influence too. Now, the other part about this, now we gotta, now we started late, so we're gonna have to head out here in a second. But the other, but the other part of this, if you, you, are you people who are on the sideline? People on the sideline who have been in, involved or engaged, or partnered uh, with somebody for I don't know two, three, four, five, six, seven years. <laughs> I don't know how you can engage that long. Y'all, y'all have a house. Y'all bought cars together. Y'all have kids together, and y'all just sort of sitting at the at, at the edge of the pool, trying to trying to maybe we're gonna jump in this year. We go this year. This anybody wants to have a date? Ain't nobody bought a cake. <laughs> Forget a ring. Nobody bought a cake. Nobody bought a cupcake. And sometimes they do give them a ring, and they just what's that? A promise ring, like when you're in eighth grade? <laughs> they they just engage for ten. Engage to do what? Years. <laughs> engage to to stay. The gate is we are engaged to stay not engaged. Um. So it, so and and I know that you start getting into an age group where a lot of the people who got married. Uh, when you were going to, now they're struggling too, and now you're wondering. But but but, if we, not everybody who jumps in the pool drowns. Nope. <laughs> not everybody who jumps in the A pool lot drowns. Of people had lessons and they know how to swim. And they can swim. Uh, a lot of people who get thrown in the pool learn how to swim, and I think marriage is one of the things you you throw in the pool, and you learn how to swim. <laughs> then sometimes because there are things that you can't be taught. So for those of you who are who are waiting again, I don't, I don't, I don't. he ain't gonna marry you if it's been seven she years. She ain't gonna marry you. It ain't gonna happen. If it ain't happened yet, um, it's probably not gonna happen. I mean, and then I know, and that's tough. Yet there's a lot of reassessment to do, and and y'all got to. Don't waste your time on somebody who's not gonna hit the ball. Who's not gonna go forward? Yes. Can't stand there. At, can't stand at the plate for ten years and not swing the bat. Because what else aren't they? My, my, my because then you waste your time. What else aren't they going to do? Yeah, you waste your time and you turn around and you in your fifties and never been married. <laughs> and you ain't been married. You mean I, and, and and where you thought your life would be isn't, and it isn't because you waited. And you're going to and, and you're not going to blame yourself. You're going to blame that other person, and you're going to become bitter. Mm -hmm. And then what? You, and then what? 
little that you did have is going to be crap canned because of bitterness. So, um, again, put yourself around successful people in whatever arena. Um, it's, it's a great place to own a law. Oh, let me show you. Debbie bought this for me. It's a little um, plexiglass thing carry. to hold your phone. You like like when you're sleeping, put the phone on it, and or so I have not put my phone on it because my phone's over here. So I put my wallet on it. You see how well that worked? Fabulous! And it's almost like one of those things in the um, in the store. That's what it's display. For. Display. His wallet store. is on display. On display. Yeah, it could just float right up. <laughs> Say there, wallet. But in any case, get help. Get help. You know what? And we don't. Deb and I don't know everything. Uh, but we know a lot. We've been through a lot. We know a lot. So if you are, if, if you're, if if you're seeing this around you, if you're struggling, um, and you've got a que you've got questions, uh, it's like where did check? We got questions. We got answers. We got answers. We got questions. <laughs> I've got a stupid expression. <laughs> um, write them down in the comments. Um, you can hit you, you you can send me an email at wls860 at gmail.com um, and uh, or hit us up on Facebook uh, you can I, you can IM me um, don't IM my wife just leave the comments down in the thing and uh, we will Why can't I, IM? I don't want people IMing you you need people I, I do get a lot of you know, bad stuff you don't want that either so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to say do that so that is that and if we can help be happy to help. If we can direct you towards somebody else who can help, I'll direct you towards somebody else who can help. All right, we got to get out of here. What time is it? It is. It's yeah, it's time to go. All right, in any case, until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, take care of yourself. And remember this, we love, love you, you, and there's, there's nothing, nothing you can do, you can do about, about it. it. We'll see you when we see you. Peace. Peace.